Tuesday, June 30th, 2020, special call meeting. Before we get started, I want to ask Commissioner Richard to give us a communication today. That's correct. Father, we're grateful for the opportunity to gather, to gather together again. Lord, we pray that you would bless our meeting. Keep us safe. Uh, Lord, keep us uh, focused. Lord, help us to have the insight necessary to be able to make decisions for our community. Pray, God, your blessings upon our first responders, our medical staff. Lord, those who are out fighting the fight uh, of uh, freedom, Lord, for our country, and, uh, and those who are maintaining law and order in our community. We pray, God, that you would keep them safe. Keep them safe from this virus. Keep them safe from, uh, um, from those who would do them harm. And uh, Lord, all the things that will happen tonight, we pray would bring honor and glory to the name of Christ. We pray in His name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sit down, sir. Just real quick, I'll let everybody know that Commissioner Stapleton wanted to be here, but had some other business he had to attend to, so I'm sitting in for him. Uh, we'll move right on into uh, the first thing on our agenda approval renewal resolution declaring local state of emergency due to COVID 19, dated March 17, 2020. What's the first? Motion, we got a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you guys. Moving on to number two. Approval of authorization for County Administrator to execute CARES Act funding agreement. Mr. Harris, you have anything on that? It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, this is on? No. I think so. It died. They died. We're, we're working on it. Okay. I'm requesting that the board go ahead and authorize me to get this underway. It's very important that we do so. Um, we've gotten tentative approval from the state on purchasing a couple of ambulances. And we need to place the order right away because the manufacturer has located chassis for two of them if we hurry up that order because they need to be completed by the end of the year. So that's why we need to go ahead and expedite this agreement. for my appearance. We did a testing in the Fayette County today and uh, it's all 236 people. So it was pretty strong of which 140 were from Swanee County. 86 were from the Fayette which is still pretty strong. I appreciate to come before you just to give you an update. We are beginning to see the test results come in from our mass testing that's been taking place in the month of June. Uh, today we were announcing 58 new cases that brings our number up to 498 cases. Uh, again, the majority of all these are connected to our testing on 620 and on 623. Uh, out of those testings, we are averaging about a 17 to 18 percent positivity rate. So the folks that we are seeing coming through the testing sites, uh, about 17 to 18 percent are testing positive. The majority of those individuals are asymptomatic. That is, they do not have symptoms. They're coming through without symptoms and being, and being tested. Uh, to date, we have tested 4,162 folks in Swanee County. 3,659 have been negative, or 88%, which is a, a relatively high number. Uh, as we continue to test, we will see uh, more positivity. And the more you test, uh, that increases your chance of uh, finding uh, more positive cases. Uh, last week, I reported the average age of those that were tested in Swanee County is 45. This week it has dropped to 42. So that tells me we're testing younger people. And in the uh, 58 cases we reported out today, 26 are under the age of 25. What we are seeing that's trending 
we are seeing families that have the COVID. In other words, the dad, the mom, the grandparent uh, has this is positive, and it's spreading through that family. So we are seeing whole families uh, that are that are testing uh, testing positive. We did announce today uh, death number 20, which is an individual passed away several weeks ago. The medical examiner has completed their review, and uh, because the individual was positive at the time of death, although they were in hospice, uh, the medical examiner has contributed that to uh, COVID as being an, uh, not the cause of death, but being as a contributory factor. And because of that, we will commit and show in our, as shown in our data, of that we do have a death and we will be announcing one an additional death i talked to the medical examiner's office this afternoon so tomorrow we should be announcing case number 21 and this was back from early in june um, so the medical examiner does review these cases he does go through and look at causes of death looks at the medical records and uh, if it can be attributable to to covid then, then we're notified and we have to report that out as a uh, as a death that uh, has a contributory factor of, of COVID. Uh, I did speak, I didn't get to speak with Rick uh, this week, but I did talk to Steve Nelson, who is uh, uh, his number two man. The hospital last week saw a huge surge, and, and as I mentioned to y'all on Tuesday, saw a huge surge in, in um, occupancy. They're currently at 93% capacity. However, he says this week is much, much better. And they currently only have 11 COVID patients in the hospital. If you recall last week, we talked about four of those who were intubated. There's only one person now in the hospital that's intubated. He says of his COVID patients, they are what they call low acuity, which means they're not extremely sick, uh, but uh, they're able to handle that and, and address that. He said this week has been a much, much better week for them. Uh, also today at Swanee Healthcare, the state has a crew in that's going back and retesting all of the staff and all of the residents as they will continue to do that uh, throughout the next several weeks in all of the nursing home facilities in the state of Florida. I did talk, uh, speak with, uh, communicated with Raven, who is the administrator, and she indicated things were going extremely, extremely well in that facility today, so I was real pleased. As I had reported out before, Surrey Place, has six residents that have tested positive. All six have been moved to a COVID facility, which is uh, designated with the COVID wing to, to monitor those patients and work with those patients. Uh, and so those those have, um, have been tra transferred out. Uh, it's been a busy time. We are working with the state and trying to discuss for the months of July and August, looking at regional testing I know that my staff has just done a tremendous job, an outstanding job, but the heat is taking its toll. If I look red-faced today, it's because it's, it was hot today. Uh, and, uh, of course, wearing that protective equipment that our nurses have to do gets extremely hot. We try to keep them fanned down, ice water uh, under a big oak tree, a shade tree, but it's, it still gets hot. And that was a large number we saw today in, in the Fayette County. But we're working with the state to look at regional testing opportunities that so they can bring in a mission and a team in and do testing. Uh, and we're trying to establish some dates and times that we can bring those folks into our community. Uh, they're talking about potentially being able to test for a full day and a thousand people. And that would open it up to where anybody could travel in uh, in, in our counties. And we're looking at Swanee, Lafayette, Jefferson, Madison, and Taylor, and they would also have opportunities for testing sites in their counties. But we've been on a call today, and we'll have another call tomorrow and Thursday to try to work out the details on that. Because at this rate, we can't continue to test 300 plus people uh, in, the, in the mornings. It's just getting hotter and hotter and hotter, and I've got some concern for our, our folks. So we're gonna try to look at some resolutions and some solutions. We've been in talking with Greg Scott, We've been talking to the emergency operations there in the sheriff's office, uh, potentially trying to find some, some sheltered places, but we'll continue to work on that. Right now, there's still a, a commitment from the, uh, the governor and state surgeon general to test 2% of your population. I can tell you that for the month of June, we have exceeded that. We've tested almost 4% of our, of our population in Swan County, and uh, that's, that's a strong number. I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. I do have a comment about 
uh, you know, any events that are coming up, especially July 4th, I strongly encourage folks to please, if you're going to be out in public, to use mitigation measures, which include social distancing, face mask, hand sanitizing. If you're sick, please stay home and, and do not attend these, these events. Uh, phase two is in effect, which means uh, gatherings of less than 50 people. But I know that there are events taking place, whether it's weddings, unfortunately funerals, birthday parties, and so forth. I just want to encourage folks to please take some personal responsibility and monitor where you are, who you're with, and what you're doing. Because that's how we're going to get out ahead of this. Because we do have COVID in our community. We are seeing younger people with COVID, and we're trying to stop the spread. So with that, Commissioner, Vice Chairman, I'll be glad to answer any questions I can. Do you have any questions from the chair? I just have a comment. Thank you for, for educating us. And the more I listen, the more I understand. And um, it's very valuable knowing what's out there, talking about the unknown, and, and um, talking about the, the wedding and the funeral, et cetera. Uh, we do have to be cautious and careful. You know, watch who you're around. It's, you know, you're around so many people, so you're trying to be distant away from them, somebody put you back that way. But I appreciate those encouraging words for letting us know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. I, I've joked about, we've all heard about the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, but you can connect everybody back to Kevin Bacon. Well, I call it seven degrees of COVID. We can connect somebody to, I mean, it's, it's that prevalent. And, and just attending these events, just be safe. I mean, social distancing, uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm a big hugger and handshaker, and I'm not able, you know, I, I, I tried to stop from doing that because we just want to be safe. Just use good common sense and, and practic practical um, actions to help us get ahead of this. Uh, we are out of masks, though. We've tried to order more masks, and at this time, uh, they're, they're on back order, so we do not have them. We've given out almost 45,000 masks in Swan County, or over 45,000 masks. Um, thank you, Mr. Foster. Um, every uh, week I want to ask you this question, most of the time I do, and that is active cases versus uh, total cases. First of all, does the state yet have a formula other than the two weeks? <laughs> they, do, they, they do not. Uh, they're not counting when somebody comes, uh, when somebody's <coughs> testing negative after uh, retesting negative, they're not taking them off of any list and keeping track of it. So at this point, what would you say our number is based upon the two weeks of active cases? Well, unofficially, because yes. we do not have a, a state formula that they, they have uh, provided us, but unofficially looking at the two week period of opportunity because of, of uh, being symptomatic. And we, as I mentioned last week, some folks are positive longer, some folks are not. Yeah. So, but, but you know, looking at a 14 day uh, incubation period of a, of a potential positive, we're up to approximately 188 folks that would have recovered. Second question for you is just really your opinion more than anything else. And I don't know how much uh, weight you want to lend to that opinion, um, but um, for the past week or so, uh, we have reports that the CDC was estimating um, that as many as 25, 26 million Americans uh, have or have had COVID. I don't know where they get these numbers. I don't know where they're, they're getting these uh, formulas uh, from. But having said that, if that is the case, wouldn't that say that our death rate is a whole lot lower than what it is right now? Uh, based upon numbers that we actually know. And I have not seen their numbers uh, because the CDC puts out a lot, a lot of information uh, daily. Uh, but yes, if, if that were the case, that, that they're estimating that number, then certainly based upon the actual deaths that we've seen, the percentage would be much, much lower. You know, a lot of folks were talking about being sick back in November, December, mm -hmm. but with flu-like symptoms. Um, and I think potentially when we're talking, we, you know, we've, we've been dealing with COVID uh, since January. It hasn't hit our area up until March. So, so it's been here for, for a while. Uh, so I think, that, I think there are a lot of folks that have already been sick and potentially if they had been tested, probably would have tested positive for COVID. Thank you. Yeah, um, 
we spoke earlier today. Yes. Sir. And I was just going to get you to answer that question <coughs> publicly about um, retests. I had somebody sent a Facebook post earlier that was claiming that every time there's a retest on a positive case to see if they're negative, that it counts back into the positive number. No. And I, yes, I, I'll be glad to, to explain. Anytime somebody is tested, that is counted towards a test. If you test positive one time, it's counted only one time. So if you continue to get retested and you're still positive, it's still only counted as one positive. But every time you get retested, it, it's counted. Now, if you test and you're negative, that's going to count as a test as part of the daily testing, but you're negative. And if you come back and, and retest again, that's going to count for another test. But if you test positive this time, then that positive will count. So every, you know, we've had several folks, that are, that we've seen folks that have tested numerous times and they were positive. We only count that, that case one time. But every time you are tested, it counts as part of the testing data. Thank you. Yeah, that was a good question that I was going to ask about who could be testing. And right now we're seeing a lot of folks come through that are retested. So have all the tests come back from the 20th and the 23rd? I know those are some big test days for you. Uh, and I think last Tuesday was a big test day as well. Yeah, that was the 20th. That was the 23rd. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're all, we're changing labs. We've um, have not been uh, completely satisfied with the response from the lab. Matter of fact, their website database went down Sunday for about uh, six or seven hours so that it negated our efforts in trying to get results and call people. So we're, we've, we're moving to a different lab that we hope to expedite. Uh, but we've got just about all the test results in, but a small percentage. Any more questions for Mr. Terry? Thank you, sir. Randy, I didn't call you today, though. Tell you something. Thank you. I have a board. I, I certainly will. And again, once we can, if we can get some state-supported help in here, and then they can test, you know, for a longer period of time, we can see more folks. I'll keep you abreast of those dates as we as we move forward. With that. It's getting it's getting hot out there. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank y'all. If you have any questions anytime, y'all just give me a shout. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else here? Any other departments? Anything? Nothing. How about anyone from the public? Anyone? Right. Mr. Attorney? I'm good for today. Thank you. Mr. Harris? Yeah. Richard? I do have a question about the uh, parking lot. Um, at what point, uh, or come on up, you can talk. Um, I would like to know if. Um, Number one, uh, which springs are open or, or which are which, and which are closed? All the springs are the boiling and the uh, river are closed. Yeah. Charles is open because of the river, <coughs> but uh, we'll recommend swim. Uh, river height is probably about 18 foot in Hanford. Uh, when it gets to be about 13 to 14, we will, is when we'll open back up. Okay. Um, it's dropping. Last I looked, it's been a few days since I looked, but uh, it was dropping just a few inches a day, and then sometimes it popped back up because of what's happening in Georgia. Are you still? Are we still seeing people uh, across the, the uh, cable and come on in anyway? Doesn't seem to be as many as they once was. And the sheriff's not here, so I can't ask him how he's doing that. Um, and um, any any word on summer programs? Uh, anything been halted, anything been pulled back? Well, we uh, are looking at instructional lessons next week. <coughs> next week. Um, we, we are not using the uh, shower rooms, uh, it's just for restrooms only. Um, the sanitation of the water sanitizes, but it's chlorine based. Um, there's smaller classes, smaller groups. Um, we've still got some closeness and lessons, but to the policy guidelines, the national guidelines. Um, the uh, public swim uh, numbers are, are half, so they're under the 50. Um, 40 is about a magic number. Um, 
day camp. Uh, we're right around 40 with that. Um, we've had I sent an email out about uh, some uh, counselor who was uh, exposed to a family member in distance, distance that, that came back as negative. He's going to know later there was a negative case. Uh, we're requiring everybody to sit out for two weeks uh, and come out with positive tests, <coughs> uh, a retest. Uh, we're not taking any, any any chances on that. Um, we've got plenty of staff to handle that. We're working, you know, they'd like to get more hours, but uh, we, we hired more people just in case they had to sit out and you know, deal with that. Um, we're planning to move forward with football. However, uh, now when the start of football is you what know, we're planning. Uh, we have to plan to be prepared. Um, you know, so we haven't made that decision to move forward yet. So with um, football there's not as much um, baseball there's a lot of national organizations and groups out there with baseball there's not as many with football to uh, we're an independent group. We don't follow anybody's umbrella for hours. So um, again we're planning but um, we will we will have a discussion next week at a red board meeting but uh, it's it's too early to tell what that's going to look like then. Um, so, but um, we, you know, we've changed our prices and how we operate uh, you know, from the guys that's in the parks to the sanitation. And we're just doing, spreading out more and doing more sanitation. And um, so far, it's working. So, you feel like your fluid, yes. any, anything that comes back from the study, um, it changes? Yeah, we. We monitor that, and um, if, you know, we will adjust up or down depending on what what the state mandates are. Thank you. Um, um, speaking with me while I'm here, uh, for that, the, the still did not get cut in the in the videos. So we've got fifty thousand for Hale Park, fifty thousand for uh, Douglas, and the Coliseum, uh, five hundred thousand was uh, vetoed. We have not heard yet on the trail uh, grants that we've got into the pipe. So um, uh, they've been easy one, but that's three million, over three million dollars for one of them. So, um, but uh, keep the low quiet, so it's a good thing too. But uh, it's been one by one. I haven't seen anything in the room yet. So I mean, yeah. But any uh, other questions? Do you have anything, Mr. Scott? Just, uh, Probably not the time to get into a big discussion, but uh, last time we talked about going to PAL and looking at the day camp they're running. They're very impressed with what they're doing, running the show. They've got teachers involved, staying in distance, sanitation stations. Um, they're doing you know, what, what we do. So um, as far as from that programmatic standpoint, I think they're, they're doing pretty fine. But, uh, Okay. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. Um, I will tell you, and I've had a conversation with Mr. Scott. We are going to obtain the keys to the facility, and it'll be treated like every other facility going forward for anyone that's leasing or renting or using one of our buildings. We will hold the keys. They won't just arbitrarily go in, take over the facility, and then decide who can't come because they've decided they're going to occupy every day. So. That, that's about to take place. I think that was discussed the time ago. You were probably doing that. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Gabriel, do you want to talk about the upcoming weekend events real quick before I move on here? Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman, for the opportunity to address the board members and the public today about the 4th of July here in Live Oak in Swanee County. Um, we're a very uh, patriotic community, and we certainly didn't want to not have a 4th of July celebration. So we are having a drive-in event. We are encouraging people to come in their cars, but maintain social distancing between their car and the next car. Um, beginning at 7 o'clock in our downtown area, so parking at Paul Langford Stadium in the um, County Commission um, 
buildings, parking lots, so where the tax offices and the property appraiser's offices, as well as the streets around, so Swanee, Wilbur, Pine, and Church, and then Heritage Square. And then we have a live broadcast, a Facebook Live program, and I thank many of you for participating in that. Um, that starts at 7 o'clock at the CRA Facebook page, and it features messages, inspirational messages from our elected officials, as well as interviews with our Korean War veterans, as well as Mr. Carey from the Health Department talking about our, our health heroes. Um, it will also be simulcast on WMLOLP 97.1 FM. So if you can't get Facebook Live on your phone or on your tablet in your car, you can listen to the program on your FM radio from your car. And then at 9.20, we're anticipating a spectacular fireworks show um, from Marshall Beck. So we're really pleased to be able to do this for the city and we want pe and the community and Swanee County. We just every want everybody to be safe during this holiday weekend. We certainly don't want to see a spike that we saw after Memorial Day. And so that's why when we began planning for this six weeks ago, this was the route that we chose. And so I, I have to thank Greg Scott and everybody at Swanee Parks. Um, they've been a big help in our planning. The police department for the city of Live Oak, the sheriff's office, and our fire department have all been um, stand up and supportive of this event. And so we look forward to seeing everybody in their cars on Saturday. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, um, will people be allowed to, because this is just, because I've got, we've got the same program, type of program down in Brantford, and, and I really haven't, gotten all the information on it is drive in. So will people be able to, let's say they have a pickup truck and they back up, will they be able to go out and get out into their bed or their truck and watch? Because there, most cars have roofs and um, uh, they're not going to be able to look up high enough, so especially if they got kids in the back seat. So how much leeway are, are families allowed around their car? So we're not requiring people stay, to stay in their car and we yeah. actually think people will get out of their cars or into the beds of their trucks to watch the fireworks. The most important thing is maintaining that social distancing when you park. Um, that's what's important. And that's why it's a drive-in event, but it's not a stay in your car as a captive event. But please, as Mr. Carey said, you know, have your masks on and, and maintain the social distancing around. You know, create a little bubble for yourself and your family um, from the, the rest of the populace. So just try to stay safe, but still, you know, enjoy each other and America. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you again, Mr. Buster. Yeah, I just had a question. Mr. Richardson mentioned uh, it's a drive-in. Have they canceled any of the events on there? Is everything still out of place? No, they, uh, I tried to get a hold of uh, uh, Councilman Saunders, the president, the president um, of the council, about the festival. Um, as far as I heard yesterday from his wife was the, the parade still on, the festival still on, it's an evening festival, and um, and the fireworks are still on, so. Um, and that's a brand yes. And if you ask me the times, I know the festival is supposed to start about five o'clock in the afternoon and go till eight, and then the, um, I think the fireworks begin at nine, and uh, I can't tell you when the parade is. I haven't yet figured it out. I think they have some stuff going on the hatch. Yeah, that's the best of the race. And the duck race is up at Ivy Park. Is that what you said? Yeah, over at the river. But I'm not sure about the duck race at all. That usually happens around noon. Duck race is at 2. 2? Two. Two? Two. Two. Is it? Okay. Yeah, two. Two. Yeah, that's what I thought. I believe the parade is at 5.30 if I'm not 5 mistaken. 5.30. So. It's either 5 or 5.30 on the parade. Okay. Yeah. So i gotta get I got to get this festival figured out because I forgot the parade and the festival start at the same time. And, and we've provided them uh, 500,000 masks to make available uh, previously. So that's what we told them to encourage folks to mask up if they're going to be out. Sure. I think the vendors are 6 to 9. And the fireworks were not put down there at six and nine. I know that the, the hatch park has to be has, hatch park is supposed to be empty before they begin fireworks. So not that's why I'm not exactly sure of the time. So I'm gonna figure it out. Right. 
in the right time now. <laughs> I've written times down before and they apparently have changed. Anyone else before I, I, I start with Mr. Richard's closing statements? Anybody got anything else for Mr. Fleming? Uh, I was having a good Thank you. Mr. Gamble? The only thing I have, as I know it's not really out there publicly yet, but it has been until seen it on Facebook. But, but Jamie, I just want to thank you for your time as a Democrat. <laughs> been an asset to us on a lot of things by writing true and accurate stories, not fake news. So I just want to say thank you. We're going to miss your, your uh, write-ups. Mm -hmm. No, uh, the paper, I don't know if you've heard the paper, is actually closing down, so I'm pulling out 20 County, so I'm completely closing down. But, uh, I, I agree with Mr. McGann, but we appreciate you, Jim done right by us and by the county and city, I believe, as well. Being as true and accurate as you can, so I appreciate it. Really good. Thanks, sir. Thank you. And I want to thank Miss Stinson over here for helping me. She's been working on a project with me. We're not quite there yet, but I want to thank you for your help today. All right. I don't have anything myself. Everyone, be safe. Enjoy the weekend. Thank you, guys. Steve. Motion. Second on the third side. Thank you guys.